Hi Rack and Rimba. So, for the last two weeks, we've learned about two groups of vertebrates, reptiles and fish. Today, let's identify other diverse groups of animals, which are mammals. Did you know that we have over 6,000 different species of mammals identified on Earth? That's a lot of mammals. There are mammals that live on the ground, mammals that can fly, mammals that live below ground, and mammals that live underwater. Despite being a diverse group of animals, mammals have a few common characteristics and we will be learning about them today. Just like reptiles and fish, mammals are vertebrates which means they have backbones. Remember in our previous session, we told you that reptiles and fish are cold-blooded? Well, it's not the case for mammals. Mammals are warm-blooded. This does not mean that their bodies are always warm. Warm-blooded means that they are able to keep their body temperature constant no matter what the surrounding temperature is. To generate heat, a mammal will convert food that they've eaten into heat energy, so they'll eat a lot in a cold environment. Some mammals store extra energy in the form of blubber. Mammals also have fur and hair that provide some thermal insulation. In hot conditions, mammals move into shaded areas, get wet or pant to lose heat by water evaporation. Ever seen a cat or a dog go, <laughs> that's what it looks like. Primates like orangutans, gibbons, and humans have sweat glands all over their body. Large mammals like elephants don't have sweat glands and they might overheat, but that's why they have large ears to cool themselves. So, it does not matter if it's cold or hot outside, mammals can regulate their internal body temperature. Mammals can also be recognized by their fur or hair color and pattern that may help them blend into their surroundings. Even mammals that live underwater like dolphins and whales have hair. While it may be hard for us to see with our naked eyes, almost all mammals have hair. All mammals give birth to life young. In the early stages of life, they feed on milk, which they get from their mother's teeth, where the mammary glands are. Mother mammals feed their young with milk until they are old enough to get food themselves. Most mammals are helpless when they are babies. Some have blurred vision when they are born like tigers and humans. That's why adult mammals protect and care for their babies until they can survive on their own. All mammals breathe with their lungs, even the ones that live underwater. Well, for example, some people are confused on whether dolphins are categorized as mammals or fish, especially because they live in the water and their entire body looks like a fish. In fact, dolphins are mammals. Unlike fish who breathe using their gills, Dolphins breathe air using their lungs through their blowpipes located on the top of their head. That's why dolphins take frequent trips to the surface of the water to breathe. If you are close enough, you will hear the sound of them exhaling along with a spray of water as it is blown away from the surface as it breathes out. The majority of mammal species are terrestrial which means they can be found on land like in the forests, grasslands, deserts or wetlands. However, some mammals do live in the sea. They are called marine mammals, for example the dolphin, seals, dugongs and whales. They are even flying mammals. Bats are the only mammals that fly. Mammals have limbs, which vary depending on where they live. Mammals that live on land have legs, so they can walk, run, jump and climb. Marine mammals have fins, so they can swim fast, and flying mammals have wings so they can fly. Some mammals have flaps of skin stretched between their legs and hands that allow them to glide like a kalugo. Well now, with all the characteristics, you can now probably identify mammals the next time you see one. Next, shall we look into some amazing and interesting mammals that can be found in Malaysia? Let's discuss our flying mammal. In Malaysia, we have plenty of species of bats. One of them is a cave nectar bat. Did you know that some plants only have the flowers open at night? The cave nectar bat loves to eat nectar and pollen from these flowers and will do so at night. They eat these flowers and the pollen gets stuck to their fur. They carry it back from plant to plant and into their cave home. This is why the cave nectar bat is a key pollinator for plenty of plant species including the durian. Without them, this tasty fruit wouldn't grow. Cave nectar bats can usually be found in caves near forests or farmlands. After a long night of looking for food, a cave nectar bat will come home to roost with thousands of other bats in the same cave. 
You can find them in limestone outcrops like Batu Caves in Selangor and cave systems along the central forest spine. Next, we have our very own marine mammal, the dugong. Did you know that there are meadows of seagrass under the sea? Well, dugongs love to graze on seagrass and they are always found in seagrass beds. This is why they've gained their nickname sea cow. Dugongs are quite large. They can grow between 2.4 to 4 meters in length and weigh up to 200 to 400 kilograms. Since they breathe air through their lungs, they come up to the surface for oxygen every 6 minutes. Dugongs are quite shy when it comes to humans. They don't like to be close, so they are tough to spot. However, you might be able to catch a glimpse of dugong in Pulau Sibu, Pulau Tinggi and the Lawas waters of Sarawak. Malaysia has a lot of amazing terrestrial animals. One of them is the Sunda clouded leopard. Have you seen a cat climbing a tree before? Well, the Sunda clouded leopards are one of the best feline climbers and can climb trees really, really well. They spend most of their time in the canopies of lowland and upland rainforests in peninsular Malaysia and Borneo. Interestingly, the unique pattern on their fur allows them to camouflage or blend within their surroundings. This way, they can sneak upon their prey while hunting. When they are not hunting, they will usually rest in the tree branches in the shades of the leaves. Wow, we have amazing species of mammals in Malaysia. Do you have a favourite mammal yet? Share with us a picture of your favourite mammal in the comment section below. Thank you for joining us and see you again next week where we will find out more about birds and amphibians. Bye!